You can also turn it a bit. But because that, that stone you can't do really going that way. You have to do it straight, but you just can turn your, your, uh, your stone. I think I have something else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That was even later, I think, but with the uh, ISU camp. Uh, after the, the uh, they, they it was the, in the summer. The yeah, summer. yeah, this summer rolled twice. Right? Right about, yeah. yeah, yeah, because after the inline world the championship, yeah. they put a lot of the inline skiers yeah. coming to TAFE in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I so we just get a small view like for uh, what's going on with the periodization and some testing so we just go through so they have like three energy uh, systems like the, the phosphate system the anaerobic and the aerobic and they're all are important But you can see you have to train all those things and the most important is of course the aerobic because that's the base yeah, a lot of endurance because the, even if you have a, a, a sprint uh, shorter is more like sprint yeah, you don't do hours of um, uh, competition but it's always short but it means a whole day in the ice ring with so many races that's aerobic so after every race you need to recover because you have to prepare for the next race and you have to prepare for the next race and sometimes you have two days or even three days competition. But that's why aerobic is important as well for short track. Not to keep going, but it's more that, re that you're, you're recovering will be faster. That's important. And the anaerobic of course is important for lactate especially for short track, is even because the lactate goes up quite quick because of the pressure in the in the corner. Yeah, they, I heard about it that about the long track speed get up to if the, the top speed is there, the pressure on, on your legs will be one and a half G. So it will be one and a half body weight. But for short track comes up to three times your body weight. So much pressure comes on your leg. And that's what you have to hold, and that's why it's so much pressure is coming on. So you, you need to you have to you need to get stronger and stronger every time. But have to be in lean as well, because that's why if you don't lean, you go out because of the the, the, the pressure from the three G. Like basically, there's somebody pulling on the board to get you out, and you have to keep your lean. And if your lean is good, then you stay on. Then you can skate good corners. So all those kind of uh, trainings coming back in, in in your periodization, like basically in the summer, you do more volume. Yeah, I will later I can show you like a, a just a program. You you do more volume, so you do more volume means that you do a lot of hours of training. Yeah, you can do like basically uh, maybe make 20 hours or 25 hours or 30 hours in a week of training. What kind of training? Different kinds of training. So we do uh, biking, we do a lot of biking in, in, in Holland. And why we do biking? Because uh, when you're so many times in, in positioning from skating, then biking is easier because you just sit and legs are doing it. If you do running as well, 
get a little bit more impact than your muscles. But running, running we do as well, but it just we do it less, and especially when for recovery. If you just do it in hard training, you still can run. But if you just only for biking is more just really aerobic, what we do. Like if you work on the aerobic one, like the D1, what we talk about, or like the aerobic two or aerobic three, is more aerobic three will be more in intense endurance. And always when you skate on short track, it's always intense endurance. That's the feeling for your legs. The leg is always goes up. And that's why on, on biking, we never go to intense endurance. Because we do short track skating, but that's why we're doing it. If you want to have endurance, low intensity endurance, we go on inline or we go on long track. Because the corners is a big difference. If you skate on the blocks or you skate on the outside on the pads, it's a difference already from 10 to 15 heart, heart rates. So only skating the blocks is so much more intense than skate already on the outside. That's why you go for a lower intensity for endurance. You have to look farther, that you have to get more relaxation from straightaways and, and, and even bigger corners. <coughs> like for super compensation, so first you train hard, you kill yourself. So the, the black line is like your base, where you be normally. But you go far under it, so you skate less fast or uh, or, or, or uh, you have a, the f your feeling is that you're not going that fast anymore that you're supposed to be. You always have a drop. And after that, you'll get more rest. And then you come back up, and then even you come above your line. And that's the super compensation. So that means you go, you can go faster than you ever been. And with that, the waves, we try to have a training program. So you wave every time if your line is here. And after periodization, you you go a little bit up, you go back down. But then you try to to pull that one up. So every time you cli try to climb up. And that's how you get faster and faster. But first you always have a drop, and then you have to come back up. And that's with a uh, load of training, and also intensity. So what I said, like in the summer, you have a lot of volume, and when the competitions are more coming, the intensity goes more up. It's less volume, it's higher intensity. Maybe it feels even harder, because the intensity is higher, but it's, it's shorter. And that's why you go, uh, for competition, you go fast. <clears throat> like here you see some lines with super compensation. Or when your periodization is wrong, you go the other way around. Maybe you peak too early. And before the competition, you already have a drop. even the last one, there's no periodization at all, and it just be the whole period you will be the same. And as a trainer of well, you just have to figure out that it's it's allowed to make mistakes. Every year when I make a program, every year it will be a it will be a challenge myself to do something new. Can we go wrong? Okay, but they it's time to you change that. Yeah, you always have to be refreshing for, for and, and, and make new things. Think about it, okay, when I try this, what happened? When I try that, what happened? Also with the athletes. So it's not, not a big issue if you make mistakes, but you have to fix it. So start with a high volume, 
build an aerobic base or they sit in the summer. So increase intensity during the season, so the speed and power. So increase the specificity during the season. So and then the, full, the volume degrees, what I talk about, and the variety in trading loads. That's what you base every time, or this is, that is what you every time doing. So even after in the winter, even when you think, okay, my next competition will be in a few months, so that's the most important. Some other competitions are less important, so you still can think, okay, I need a, an extra block of two, three weeks of volume, you build it in. So you build it in, you get a little drop, and then the intensity goes up again. When the competitions are coming closer, and then you get a peak again. So you choose your competitions where you want to be on the best. And the rest have to be based a lot of competitions. <coughs> like this for tapering, tapering at the end is like, it means that on the, 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 the competition where you want uh, to score the most points or the best results, that means that have to be really good. And sometimes it goes wrong. Like uh, most of the time I have around between 12 and 16 skaters. If from that, I have, when I have 10 skaters on the right moment, on the right peak, I'm doing a really good job. And there are other six, sorry. It's never, it's never possible for a coach for everyone to have a, the best peak. It's not possible. Nobody get that score. So even when you make 80%, they do a really good job. probably mean that the others are having another peak in, in another competition. <coughs> Where everybody understand a bit? Like monthly and two, four weeks is for the overload training. And the tapering can be one to four weeks, depends on when the competition and what you're doing. I show you later. Maybe some macro cyclists. This is basically what it looks like for the whole year. Yeah, you have like your, uh, in the beginning, like the, the yellow, is like the summer. And when you come to uh, the, the light blue, is the, 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 like the periodization, you're coming closer to the competitions. And like the, the, the brown one is like the, the, the competitions itself. So you can work really to, okay, where I want to have the high intensity and just the volume. Yeah, you can like write uh, write it down on, on for yourself. Um, like what you can see here, like uh, this is like a recovery training. This is like a endu ex extensive endurance, extensive interval, intense interval, intense endurance, an interval tempo, like a tempo training, uh, a competition uh, prepar preparation, the competition yourself. This is weights like speed, or combination, all those things, uh, core, uh, flexibility, like skating, inline, biking, dry land, running, all those kind of training and different kind of training you put in. And you put it with numbers, okay, I want to have three times biking, okay. You can put it down and then you get a number of um, trainings in a week. And then you can really look for yourself, like, okay, I did seven trainings this week, I did 10 trainings that week, so now I have to recover a bit, so I go back to five trainings and all those kinds. It's, it's, it's a, just a few for yourself, for, as far as a coach, to see what's going on. 
and also can okay what I, what I want there okay we'll go something wrong so okay uh, where it goes wrong goes wrong here probably I did too much so I have to change a bit so I go to the next preparation will be a little bit less a little less steps so probably then then it will be good you always can look back where it can be wrong so it's the same with the intensity and all those bits like the color means as well the, the intensity and this is basically what you make for a year is like the the blue one is like um, volume and the orange one is recovery all the way at the top so we have the pyramids like what you're going to do from every week okay the colors are on, on, on from this here yellow one is volume, the, the green one is recovery, the red one is intensity, and the blue one is taper. So all those colors are coming back as well. And you can see where you want to have the intensity, so the intensity goes up, the volume drops a bit. So probably when you have normally uh, 12 trainings in a week with volume, when you go to intensity, you drop it probably to 8 or 9 trainings, where the intensity goes up. And then you play with that. Like with the circle, that's the most important competition that they pick out. That's where they want to have the peak. Or they have one peak, that's want to be there. So all, all, all those weeks in front is coming out that have to be come together at the end on that on one competition, probably will be world championships. <coughs> Some testing what we do as well, like uh, the two main tests what we're doing is like a VO2 uh, max test. So uh, that's basically what we're gonna do is like sit on the bike and every three minutes the weight goes up. So basically you you're you cycling between twelve and fifteen minutes. And the heart rate goes up every time because it gets heavier. We do some lactate testing. So what is the lactate from the blood? When when there is like the, the, the threshold, the threshold means um, from the low intensity to high intensity. So threshold means that you can, if you stay on that one, you can continue that. If you go above the threshold, probably you will kill yourself in a few minutes, or even maybe a minute. Because then the lactate's getting harder and harder, and then you can't go anymore. So what you try to do with the test to see if you can do threshold higher and higher. Because that means that you can, um, can work harder on a higher intensity. So at the end you go faster. And the wind gate is like a 30 second test on the bike. You just go from the gun, full pull. So what you want to see is your peak power. Probably your peak power will come in between 3 and 6 seconds. And after 10 seconds you already think I'm already done but then you still have 20 seconds to go you really kill yourself and even in 30 seconds like people are coming out of uh, lactate coming out from, from 15 between 20 some people like after the 30 seconds people some people they just throw up because they feel sick because your body gets crazy 
but what, what you see is there, just the peak power is important and the, and, and the threshold, like the anaerobic uh, one, because it goes probably like this, and if the anaerobic stuff goes like slowly go down, it means that you're in good shape, okay? you, you have a good volume, probably you're good in endurance, like 4,000, 1,500 meters. If it's if you're more sprinter, it goes up and then it drops really quick as well. And what you want, to, of course, as well, even for a sprinter, you try to get that line as smooth as possible to go down. Because then you mean that you go better, you will be faster. And you can't compare it with other skaters, it is always a test for yourself. You try to get better out of yourself. For every test, you want to you beat yourself. Because some people have another, another result. But it's just biking. And probably when like when we do this and we do it with Shinky Knecht, you never have good results. And when you put him on the ice, he's the fastest. So it's not always saying something, but it's more just more for that person. Okay, when we have this test and this result with him, if we can get better and the higher and, and uh, the better uh, test, we know that he gets going faster on the ice. is basically how it looks like when it's coming out. So all those things from the field to max, what is important. So basically you do it like can be three, four times a year. So beginning season, after summer and half season or the end. I just want to see what, what's going on. If you go back to like the commercial team from uh, Long Track, from the Jumbo team, from Jack Orly, they test almost like uh, every week. They test before competition, they test after competition, they do everything by testing. So he knows, okay, when the test results are good, this is what you can do, and you have to skate fast. Because the test is not lying. You do everything about testing. There's also a way, but it costs you a lot of time. And also the uh, athlete has to be committed to the test. Yeah. Must not cheat to the test. No, no. He has to, to give 100% uh, no. no. to the test in order for the test to be right. Yeah. To be precise. Yeah, and then, then like and after like weeks or years or months, you know, you get data. And all the, with that data, you, you can figure out, okay, um, that's why he already, like you have already, from the 1500 meters, you know, okay, with this test, with this results, you're supposed to skate this time on the 1500. So if this coming out from a wind gate, with this results, probably you will, you will skate uh, in the top three of the world. So close is really with his, with all his data from a few years. But of course, you, you have to skate. If you can't skate, then you know you can put a biker on those tests, and you're like, oh yeah, you can skate a world record, but you can't skate. So, that's also important. I guess for the wind gate test, you see the, the peak power goes really up. This is the, this is the, the purple one, and then the anaerobic one will be the, the, the drop. get numbers and all those things so it can be important for, for a skater. But you have to do it, you have to do it free, uh, frequency like every six to eight weeks. Now I try to do it every month to see what's going on. Sometimes you have an idea, okay, the, the peak power has to be improved now because this is what I did in my program. I want to see it. So before the test I already said to the person, okay, this is what I expect, and then you see see it back that like almost everybody have a better peak. Then you know that your program is correct. It's also something for a coach to like, okay, we're on the right way.
I think this is also uh, true, like, athletes are no robots, you know? So it's, you also need uh, some recovery somewhere. It's also mental, you need to recover. So all those things are also important for the results. So train hard, train smart, and test often. Especially like train hard and train smart is the most important. They don't test. They don't test. You still have to train smart. <laughs> and the results will come. Commitment with each other. That's the most important. If you have a commitment with each other and everybody believes in something, then you can achieve your goals. If you don't believe, you can't achieve your goals. And that's really important. A commitment means that you show up every day. Even the best trainer is training you, but if you don't show up, it can't make you better. You only get better when you train. If you only can train once a day, you have to train smart. You still can get better. Like from school you get homework, maybe you have homework as well for training. Are you doing it? Are you willing to do it? Or you want to cheat. The trainer not seeing it, so why I'm doing it. You're not doing it for your training, you do it for yourself. So if you look in the mirror, and you can say to yourself, okay, I'm a cheater, or I work hard. And there's where it's coming from. <coughs> it has to be in your heart. You want to, you want to achieve the goal, and you go for it. Doesn't matter where you train. If you're luxury or not, doesn't matter. If you believe in it, every you can train everywhere. And if you do it together, you're stronger. If you do it on your own, it's a lot of work. I think in here in this room they're talented skaters. But you, do you believe it or not? Can you help each other? Yes or no? Do you want to help each other? That's the most important. And if you're willing to help each other, it makes it easier for everybody. And there's where it starts for everyone. It doesn't matter for sport or, or, or the education or, or your job. life as well, you just go for it. If you believe something, you can reach it. Now you're quiet, eh? <laughs> Questions? Saturday we'll talk about more like uh, multidiscipline. So in line, long track, short track, combination, why it's good, why it's not good, all those things. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank Great you. Attention. Thank you very much.